Saturday and a day on Friday. So we never got back to butchering on Friday and um, Saturday. We were scurrying like mad, butchering the deer to get them frozen. So what we've been doing the last three days is washing dishes, butchering, washing dishes, butchering, and then resting. Today, however, I wash dishes. <laughs> And uh, now we're butchering the elk. So, little disclaimer, if you don't like blood and you don't like that kind of stuff, then you may not want to watch because we have a huge portion of the elk sitting in the center of our cabin here that we are cutting on. So, um, just a little disclaimer. I'm going to spin this around here. Hope you guys are all well also. Okay, so there is the mountain man. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure if Carol's on or not, but Carol, that was for you. Um, he's got the rib cage in here, so he is cutting the meat off the ribs. This will all be burger meat. So what we have in that bucket right there is all to be ground up into burger. Hello, Chad. Hello, hello. Hey, brother. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. We're praying for you. So what he's doing here is just cutting all the scraps off. The scraps go in this bucket. They are not wasted. Those are going to become bait for his trap line uh, in certain instances. So, um, and made into lures and all kinds of other different things. So nothing really goes to waste here um, on the homestead. Yeah, it's a real shame. There's a lot of people. Yeah. Take this stuff. And I realized when we rib meat on a deer, there isn't hardly. I mean, when you're done deboning a deer, there's like a handful of meat. And it's kind of a pain. But especially on an elk, it's a shame people just pitch this stuff. I mean, there's a lot of meat here. There's a lot of meat there. And it's just a shame. And oftentimes what's really sad here in our area is you'll see people that are out hunting horns and antlers, you know. And so at the dump site, you'll see the neck, a lot, a majority of the animal, with the exception of the back straps and the hind quarters, everything else is left laying at the dump. It's just really disturbing because that could feed a family and... You know, most people around here get very disturbed when they see that because it's such a waste. So many families live off of the game meat here, and we don't let anything go to waste. We eat the tongue, the heart, the liver. Uh, we we do the neck roast up. Uh, that is becoming one of our favorites. That is just, there's so much meat on the neck. And you cook that slow on low heat, it is just amazing meat. So, got a bunch of people joining in here. Hello, howdy, howdy, Miss Toika. Hi, Aaliyah. Um, Chad says driving just came out of the oil field. Awesome. That means that you were looking at a job, so or working on a job. So that is awesome. Glad you could jump on and join us. So, a lot it's of the, go ahead. As good as the oil field can be. Right. <laughs> It provides work, though. Yeah. Chad knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Yes. So this most of this meat here is going to get ground up into burger. And, um, I mean, you could use this meat for, uh, you know, the rib meat. You could, you could crack them, cut them, and put them, you know, boil them and then put them on a fire, and they would be really tasty. Uh, we don't. We don't tend to do that. We cut the meat off the bone and burger it. Hello, Miss Shelley. And uh, utilize it all. You can do use it for jerky as well. Uh, so he just got done cutting up the front shoulders. Those are used also for burger. Sometimes um, on the elk, we'll use that for roast. But the hind quarters and the back straps on an elk are... The back straps are huge. So we've already actually froze those. Those are in the freezer already. And uh, get a lot of roasts from the elk hindquarters. 
And uh, the necros are another huge thing from the elk. Uh, it's a shame a lot of people throw necros away. It's a, a lot of meat there. Good meat, too. Yeah. Carol says, woohoo, Carol's in the house. <laughs> She says, wow, look at the mountain man go. Hey, girl. <laughs> We're glad you're in the house. He did his grunt for you. I don't know if you were on when he did it or not. <laughs> if not, huh. <laughs> oh, but yes, this is my house. This is what the cabin looks like. There's not much room otherwise. I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Is dogs. And of course, they, they know where to be. They're, they're laying there just in case. Something falls to the ground. Copper got a little lucky a little bit ago when he brought this in. A small piece fell off. So <laughs> Carol says all the babies. <laughs> They're going to be spoiled. I know. I've missed you too, Carol. It's been crazy. These last, well, we've gotten rain. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I'm going to try. I'll try to show you what it looks like out here. That's just a, a small glimpse at the muddy mess we've got. I'm going to step out here and show you. It is just, we've had rain, like downpours. If it had been snowing, we'd have feet of snow. But it is just, you have to wear waders over at the uh, sawmill. I mean, it is just a muddy, muddy mess. So we are, we're, we're happy to be butchering right now because... There's not much else to do other than be knee-deep in mud. But at least we are we are cozy and warm, right? And we got lots of good meat. So I'm heading back in here. <laughs> okay, so. So yeah, it's been dish it's been washing dishes, butchering meat, washing dishes, butchering meat. And visiting a little bit on Friday and chilling yesterday. Yesterday was nice. We've really relaxed. So that was good. I hope you guys had a day of rest. I hope you enjoyed your day. Toika says, smart kids, yes, they know where to be. And Carol says, you want to see the rain? We got it. It's bad. Same as you. Not good. Yeah, it's been. It, last night, oh, my goodness, it just dumped. It was. And the night before. Shelly said, we had rain overnight, but that changed to snow after I got to work. And you, of course, don't need snow. Shelly lives on an island, and they don't have much equipment to even clear snow because they don't typically get snow. Toika says, supposed to get two inches of rain today in Everett. Yeah. It's just crazy. I'm thankful for the rain in the regard that if Austin is able to come home for Christmas, he will be able to come home. He won't have problems. I mean, it's balmy outside. It's just crazy how how warm things are. Tammy um, Richards, who is in Montana, shared that it was 54 degrees yesterday. I don't even know what it is. Can you see? About, I can't tell. Uh, 40, 45? 48. 45, 48, something like that. So it's it's balmy here, too. This weather is just insane. I mean, October, we were talking about it. When we were in the tent, when Chad was here, it was well, negative, we're, going we're to negative temps ready, and, and getting ready for heavy snow in the beginning of October. It was like, this is just nuts. And now it's warm. Let me just see. Lots of places without power here. Wow, because of all the rain? That's crazy. Or the snow. Wait, what did you say you got? Because of the snow, Shelly? And just the weight of it? Possibly. And they're all saying hello to one another. I love it. I love it. You guys are so good. So how many of you actually butcher your own meats, whether it's meat that you raise or meat that you harvest? And for those of you watching the replay, chime in, because this is an important skill, because you got to figure if... If the store is shut down and there isn't meat available to you, this is going to be your next option. So knowing how to do this stuff is really, really important. Yes, lines and trees down. Wow, that's just crazy. Are you still are you still having or able to get stuff in there? You're not having troubles with that, Shelly, since you're on the island? Um, Toika says it was supposed to be snow, but it's 50 degrees, right? I know. Well, we were supposed to have snow all week long and, and it was funny looking at the forecast. We had what, two inches and an inch and then five inches and four inches. I mean, till it all added up, it would have been a lot of snow. It was a lot of rain. And, and we both said, had this been snow, oh my word, we would be, 
it, we would be eyeball deep, I think. It was it was something. Our shower house is nice, though. Oh, my goodness. It keeps getting more modified, and it was very cozy and warm in there. It was a nice, relaxing shower. I'm, like, so excited. So things are taking shape. And once we are done the butchering, we're going to start working in here and try to get things in place with the pantry and the water and my kitchen sink and all that good stuff. So let me see here. Uh, Carol says, I'm in the UK. We buy it in, in Asta. Is Asta a town or a store? And a lot, I, I imagine you have a lot of farms, Carol. Is that true? Uh, in this, in a lot of the United States, there are a lot of farms that sell meat and, and butcher shops too, but, um, it's hard to say what's going to happen with all this chaos that's going on. Shelly says, they said that December will be warm, but the next two months are to be cold with snow. Wow. That's crazy. Toika says, I can carve up a chicken and turkey bought from the store with lots of smiley laugh faces. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Carve away. Oh, uh, Carol says that's a shop. They don't sell from the farms very often. Are you limited to doing so? Because I know they, they you know, put lots of limitations on that here, too. Although, um, I know there are some that are able to. It's just, it's just crazy. It was, we really enjoyed having our chickens and our rabbits. Um, eventually, we will... Uh, do that again just right now it's not in the cards but um if things continue to go the way they are th we may have chickens really soon though uh shelly says they usually can get things here we have large ferries that run multiple times daily wind is the worst for the ferry service i imagine i imagine um it's shot but nearly but nearly all the time okay all right well, I want to just encourage you guys to learn these skills. And if, if you have people near you, that is the best and easiest way. Um, and also, what I can do is when he brings in the um, hindquarters to share with you how he cuts things up. It's actually pretty simple. I'm going to share with you what he's got going on here now. Now, he's basically just really sharp knives is the key thing. And he's carving away the fat and, and carving the meat down to the bone. You can, it's kind of bloodshot here from the gunshot. Um, it gun just gets slimy, right that's what he's talking about. And this stuff, you got to get that stuff off or that, that can ruin your meat. Um, you always want to try to get as much get, blood off of everything. Yeah, get your blood and everything off. And I just... I know it, it's it's time consuming and a lot of people, like I said before, they um, let this stuff go. And that's it's just a shame. But yeah, it takes a little bit of time. But you think about what I'm gonna get just off of what I'm gonna cut right here for me and her. See, I'm just following the ribs right down. And uh, I'm going to start getting back into the fat there. So I'm going to just keep going right down along. But what we'll get off of this little piece right here is easily going to be a meal. Yeah. Oop. For for us. So, and if somebody, yours truly, wouldn't have shot the thing like I did, I might not have had much blood, but. I mean, right there, a lot of people would throw that away. You take that, you want some mighty fine eating. You take that and um, lay it out and put some bacon in there and <laughs> put some um, onions and peppers, roll it a little bit, put some more onions and peppers and roll it. And, and more this, bacon. And more yeah, bacon. You can just keep rolling <laughs> it and roll that up like such and pin it with a couple toothpicks that's some mighty fine eating that's some mighty fine eating yep. but we'll take this and turn that into burger we go through a lot of burger so um as a matter of fact that is what the mountain boy is getting for christmas we um processed the deer 
I have to try to get my note. Hang on one second while I spin over here because I'll, I'll share with you how much meat we got from our deer and you'll understand why <laughs> I'm trying to hold the tripod and do this. It's not working. Hang on one second. Ugh. But anyway, the mountain boy is getting um, a butchered deer for Christmas. <laughs> Not all kids would appreciate that or understand that, but he's living in a, in a place up there, and one of the big concerns is having money for his food. So that is what he is going to get for Christmas. It will be packs of burger and... Um, it will also be uh, roasts and uh, the back, some of the back strap. But here, just to give you an idea of what we got from our deer, we got 10 roasts, 6 neck roasts, 12 deer back straps, 2 loins, and 33 packs of burger. So um, that gives you an idea. Now, just from the elk, we have 10 packs of backstrap. Like I said, it's massive. And we also have two elk loin that we froze already. So that just gives you an idea. I mean, you get a lot of meat. And to be able to do this yourself, you know, typically when you, when you shoot an animal, a lot of people will take it to the butcher and you'll pay a couple hundred dollars to have it butchered like this and also wrapped and packaged and frozen where we choose to do that all ourselves and we save ourselves so so much money you know you know what you're getting back oh that too um, and that you're getting your own meat yeah because <laughs> i i've heard stories of people that have taken stuff in and they pretty sure the the size of animal that they took in they should have had a lot more meat and they didn't get that back right and so not sure if they didn't get their deer back or elk or whatever um so it kind of at least this way i know how the meat's been handled yep. um when i was younger uh i used to go in deer season, I'd go help a an old butcher down the road from where I grew up from the farm, and uh, help him butcher during butcher season. So after I get done with chores and everything, I'd run down there and butcher till nine ten o'clock at night, and then come back home, get up, go to school, and do it all over again. Come home, work. And <laughs> do it all over again so. and that's another benefit too is you know um taking on jobs for you young people that are joining us you know take on jobs that will teach you the skills you need to know so for him going to the butcher shop he learned a lot of additional skills um we were even blessed with a sausage recipe and scrapple right yeah and scrapple yeah. Um, <laughs> The old butcher that I used to ha help, unfortunately, he he passed away. Yeah, just recently. About a couple years ago, and uh, but I was blessed to get his sausage recipe and uh, his uh, scrabble recipe. He was well known for both, so yeah. it was it was a real special treat to it get was, that <laughs> yeah it was it was a, kind of a secret thing you know butchers didn't just, don't just give out their secrets i think he felt it was so. safe though because we were in idaho and they were back in pennsylvania so <laughs> i don't know if we would have asked back there if he would have he probably would have he might have <laughs> we have a couple of comments i saw caleb messaged hello caleb let me see here what do we got going on okay um Toika says, okay, education is always good. And Shelly says, we'll have to watch later. Using data is no internet here at work. All right, Shelly, love you, girl. Praying for you. Stay safe out there. Carol says, when I came to America in 2009, I had grade A1B for something. 
Wow, it was amazing. Came home, had a beef roast. It was yuck. Not eaten beef since in a roast. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we get spoiled. <laughs> yeah. That's us. A lot of it, too, is depending on what they've been eating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just no different than any of your game animals. Um, that's a big thing if you're living in the desert and stuff like that. They eat into... A lot of sagebrush and that, and that really affects the meat. Um, Can really taste the sage. The sagey stuff, but yeah. that and, and how fast things were cooked and all kinds of stuff play into how how things taste. Yeah, when your meats are cooked way too fast and on high heat, it just makes it it brings out the gaminess for one, and also. Um, yeah takes away from the tenderness and it just ends up not it, it ends up being a hockey puck meal course or uh, they're just it's not nice um toikas is perfectly good meat of course more bacon <laughs> absolutely oh, yeah. sister uh, absolutely gotta, gotta have that bacon that's my favorite food group <laughs> bacon and bacon and a little bit more bacon. I'll have to share a picture with you guys of the turkey we had a couple of years ago for Thanksgiving. You couldn't even see the turkey. It was just crisscrossed with bacon. I forget how many pounds of bacon I used on it. Carol says, what a brilliant idea. I do that for my kids. They call it mom's red cross parcels, lol. <laughs> That's all right. Those are the best kind. They learn to appreciate stuff better, I think, that way. Um, Toika says, that deer sounds like an awesome gift for anybody. We've actually been blessed to be able to gift others in the past, too, and that's a really good feeling. You know, if we have abundance, we, we, we share it. So Caleb says, yeah, I've heard some of the same stories. I think that was when you were talking about the um, taking a deer to the butcher shop uh, and not getting your own meat back. I saw him post that. Yeah, it's a shame. That stinks. Um, I, I know that's one thing that that old butcher that I used to help, um, he was very, very picky on with his stuff. Adam and about like, it. You, you made sure that you kept everybody's stuff separate and they were getting what they brought, brought. in. Yeah. So. Toika says that would be really frustrating to pick up what wouldn't seem like enough meat. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Especially when you you know you dry you work hard to harvest it. They're not light animals, especially the elk. Oh my goodness! If you guys would see what we go through sometimes to get them out of the woods and out of the, where they're shot, it's just <laughs> it's quite funny. It's um, some work. It it we I know we look really hysterical at times, but it works and we get them out. Um, Carol says, my favorite place over there was Wendy's Law. I've never seen a square burger. <laughs> yeah, you have to wonder, right? Although that's funny. I like square versus round, So, but we don't eat out. I can't. <laughs> well, and he can't now either. Uh, we eat so wholesome and so clean that if we eat out, we get sick. So our bodies are not able to do that any longer. And for me, I would flare terrible because my body's just so sensitive. It, it's crazy. I um friend copper of mine, friend of mine hey lay down wrong. sister no <laughs> um friend of mine part owner in a welding fabrication company and sometimes i'll go help him on some jobs and uh it's funny everybody goes out to eat at these places and fast food restaurants and stuff and man i get eating that stuff and it's just like oh <laughs> nasty i get oh i get sick in the stomach and yeah Whew. yeah <laughs> uh toika says standalone food group bacon yes exactly <laughs> yeah uh, since since i got sick we were already eating very clean we were already eating really clean but um when i got sick i had a I we can't eat at other people's homes and we can't eat out because even seasonings have all kinds of fillers. You've got non or uh, uh, you know what I'm trying to say MSG. 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 Yeah, MSG and in stuff it's, and it's crazy with her with MSG. <laughs> Not long after she has something with MSG in it, 
she'll start to swell up, her fingers will swell up, her face gets all red and splotchy and swells up. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Everything swells. It's not nice. And I, I have the same struggle with uh, GMOs. My body's just that sensitive. So if you need to ever test anything out and be sure that it's clean, I could, I could be the the tester but I don't punish myself anymore so we're really careful um I just get I I no longer wish to punish myself so when we're out if I can't find something that's wholesome for me to eat I just don't eat and I even have to be careful what I'm drinking because they put natural flavorings and everything and natural flavorings uh is permitted by the FDA <clears throat> to include MSG and all kinds of other crap and so you don't really know what you're getting in your food. So we've really switched to just raw ingredients and making our own things. And and that can get tough because I don't have all my pantry stuff in here yet. And yesterday we were sitting, we had eaten breakfast. And typically on a Sunday we just, we eat bre a big breakfast and then we kind of pick for the rest of the day. Or if there's leftovers, we'll do, um, you know, leftovers and stuff. But we are out of picky food, you know, like finger food. And that's actually on my list. I'm making no-bake cookies in a little bit. Um, chocolate oatmeal no-bake cookies. And uh, so we were running out of picky things. So it's nice when you have, um, when I'll have my pantry in here that I can keep up with that stuff and have like uh, homemade granola and homemade pretzels and possibly potato chips. I love, we love potato chips. We are, we love potatoes. <laughs> That's another food group here. Toika says MSG in a drink. Well, all of your drinks, a lot of our drinks have natural flavorings in them and MSG is used as a flavoring as well as other things. So, um, I've got to be that careful that I can't risk it, and it is in things. It's also in, um, I've heard that it's in milk in some cases when they do the natural flavorings in some of the milks and, and cheeses. So I just stay clear. Uh, it really is not a pleasantry because I'm usually sick for about a week, and I just, I don't, I, I like life too much, and I don't want to be cooped up and sick, so I avoid it. Um Carol says, come on, Mountain Man, get her shelves up. Bless her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Get, the, get this meat butchered, and then I can really get to it. I know. Chop, chop, right? <laughs> she says, good man. <laughs> Toika says, I never thought of that. Oi, in milk. What the heck? Oh, yeah. I mean, we... Austin has been on a gluten-free and a dairy-free diet since he was in between seven and nine is when we started really getting hardcore. And uh, that was my biggest and first eye-opener into our food and the garbage that's in our food. And uh, I'm actually going to spin this around so you can see what he's doing because he's cutting the rib meat out now. So he goes down the one side and gets it all cut out and then goes back and slices it out. But like I said, a sharp knife is really important. He's sharp, resharpening and sharpening these knives as he goes because they do get dull as you're as you're butchering. But um, these are, these go ahead. These are some knives that I made. Yeah, I showed those the other day when I was washing dishes. Mm. And you made the handle out of that one out of plastic jugs, right? Yeah. Yeah, you had to melt it down, but yes, and mold it. Yeah. Like I said, we do a lot of experimenting and like to do new things all the time. So that was one of one of the many that we've done here. But really, check your packaging. I mean, when you start reading what's in your food, when you start reading and you don't can't understand or know what it is that is in your food, it's a good indicator that you don't want to be eating it. Um, but when you start eating clean also, the effects you will see is that you will start losing weight. You will feel healthier. Your skin will change. You will sleep better. Um, you won't have as many aches and pains. It's quite amazing. It's really, really quite amazing when you start really paying attention to your diet and catering to your body because we only get one and it is our temple and we're supposed to take care of it. So, um, and with my healing, that was crucial. That was absolutely crucial. Uh, I was so limited. There was like, what, maybe four or five foods I could eat for the first three years without getting sick. 
It was yeah. quite avocados was one of them and potatoes. Potatoes was actually really helpful. Um, I had to be careful of Idaho potatoes because of uh, the mold spores in the ground. But um, potatoes actually help pull toxins. So that was good because, like I said, potatoes is one of our food groups. So here you can see what he's accomplished here. So getting all that meat out. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of meat. And we've already smoked that in our smokehouse previously on the other homestead. That's and good jerky meat good jerky meat it gets a little it's a little tougher if you're smoking it but it's not uh not terrible i mean it's hard to take a hind quarter and um turn it into jerky it's hard to beat that but it, uh, <laughs> Carol just said he's done a better job than a vulture. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh. She's never she says I've never seen those dogs so still. Oh, I know, but man, are they are their senses alert? <laughs> she says lol. Yeah, they uh they tend to perk up a little bit and <laughs> oh man, he's kind of like, yeah, whatever. But the other ones, man, normally when I come in with a piece of meat, they're all like, oh looking yeah. At me. Well, look at this. I'm going to spin this around here. There's the next one waiting in line. Olaf is waiting too for his turn because occasionally he gets a piece tossed out to him too because I'm not feeding him. He either needs to eat the scraps or he needs to hunt, one or the other. <laughs> Yeah, so they're busy. Now, I saw Toika said, oh, yeah, I've been gluten-free and dairy-free for years. Need to work on sugar. Okay, I've got some time on sugar. Sugar replacements. Um, sugar, sh you can get organic sugar, and it's much better for you. However, it's still sugar. And excess of sugar still causes the body to hold fat and and so forth so you know you still want to everything is within moderation but what i have found and what i have replaced uh, our sugar with and i still use organic cane sugar but i prefer coconut sugar so i use coconut sugar and i use monk fruit and both of them are really really awesome um you can get um brown or white monk fruit uh sugar and both are low glycemic so if you're diabetic it is a great way to go and um, they really sweeten things well uh, as a matter of fact when I started switching things over it was it was hard to tell the only time they could tell is when I didn't use enough because I I've always cut like when I'm using making a recipe if the recipe called for a cup of cane sugar I only did like three quarters so when I started doing that with the coconut and and the monk fruit, it it was a it wasn't as sweet. The monk fruit is the coconut sugar isn't as sweet. So I use full full to the recipe when I'm doing the coconut sugar. But you get the same results. It's great to bake with and um, very tasty. I also use stevia. Um, natural stevia. I still have all the stevia leaves from our garden before. I need to grind those up and, and powder those. Um, of course, that's going to be green, but it's still very sweet. And uh, I use stevia in my drinks, you know, my coffee or my uh, herbal coffee, my teas. And we also use honey. I, we did have bees on the other homestead, um, and they swarmed on me and I never got another set of bees. However, I did have a swarm come in and that was really cool. I was going to say it was wild and it was that too. Um, but they came in and they, they went into our box. We had them come in for what, like three or four years till they finally settled in one of the empty boxes, but they sent scouts out and evidently they liked our spot and they went in and I was, it was when I was packing up the shed and uh, I heard them come in. It sounded like a freight train coming through the yard. It was the craziest thing. They are so loud. And uh, I, the next day I went over and I was weeding around the box and I scared them. And I should have just left them alone. And they, they left. 
Uh, but when I was in, when I was in the shed packing up after I weeded, I heard this noise and I just couldn't, it sounded like thunder. You want to go out. So I'll open the door and I'll ouch, go this way and you can go that way. And this is the shuffle. There we go. I got the, <laughs> I got the door. Okay. So that's another form of fabulous sweetener is natural honeys. It's also a great natural remedy to have around because when you have the natural, the you have homegrown honey and, and uh, fresh honey. And out here where we are, there's no pesticides. So it's really clean honey. And uh, that's also very medicinal. So that was a huge thing to have here on the homestead. Um, let me see here. Toika says, so now how will you preserve the meat canning? Well, we have a freezer at a friend's house that is an electric freezer that was gifted to us. And we have a, a propane, propane freezer. And that's still in storage. Until I get the pantry in here, I can't rearrange my container right now. So it's still in another uh, trailer. When we get the kitchen in here better, we'll put the propane freezer in my container and turn that on. So we'll have that. Now we have canned our meats in the past. As a matter of fact, um, I think it was 2013, the mountain man got a moose. We also had five deer, five buck, uh, white tailed deer, uh, because we all filled our tags, Austin, myself, and, and Glenn. And then his cousin was here living with us, and his dad came out hunting. So we ended up with five deer and the moose. And I'm trying to think if we had elk that year or not. I don't think so. I think it was just the deer and the moose. But anyway, the moose filled the freezer completely. So we had to can all five of the deer, and we had... We put 113 cans of venison on our shelves that year. So uh, we do can it. We also um, do jerky at times. Um, I think right now, just because of us trying to get the water in the house, I was looking to see if he was coming. Um, we're trying to get the water in the house and the pantry in here and, and things set up. I think we're just going to freeze it this year uh, just to make things a little easier on ourselves. And... Uh, do it that way but we have canned and it's amazing and when you can burger um it's very simple all you do is you pack the burger into the jars you make sure it's in there nice and tight and you give it your inch headspace and wipe the jars clean heat up your um flats or your lids Wipe them dry, wipe the top of your jar dry, put them on, put the lid on, screw it tight, and put them in your canner. You don't need to add water. I skipped a step there. We do add salt. And you can add seasonings, but one of the things we found is that your seasonings get very strong over time on the shelf. It's much better to just put salt. I put a teaspoon of salt in each quart jar. And, and then when we cook it, we season it because we use garlic and, and all of our seasonings as we're cooking anyway. Um, and that way it doesn't get a, uh, overwhelmingly strong in the jar. Um, so just a tip. Or if you're going to season it, don't season it all the same. Break it up and do different things in the different jars and mark them. Um, but great way to do things. Uh, let me see here. Carol says, coconut palm sugar. When I had my cancer, my nurse told me to cut sugar, use coconut palm sugar. Yep, that's awesome. Yes, because sugar actually feeds a lot of things. If you have a yeast infection of any kind, um, an overabundance of, of uh, candida in your, in your gut, sugar is going to feed that. And, and sugar also causes your body to spike. It gives you... Uh, false sensations of energy that you are on a high and then suddenly you come crashing down where the coconut palm sugar is so much better, so much healthier for you. And it doesn't feed, you know, the candidas and the different things in the system that we want to try to get rid of. And it also helps keep the gut healthy. So, and it helps you to lose weight. You know, sugar is, and then of course, you know, you've got, you've got two things that you're com combating and that is that most of us eat a lot of bread. So you've got that starch and that starch turns to sugar and then you are, are devouring a lot of sugar. So it's double fold and um, it, it's, not, it's not as good for the body as it, it tastes good, but you got it all in moderation. We're really careful with that. 
Um, most of the snacks and the things that I make are low sugar and all non-GMO, healthy oils and uh, healthy butters. So um, it really does make a difference. I mean, it really does make you a lot healthier and, and feel so much better. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So let me see here. Um, Toika says, I have used maple syrup and honey. We'll check it into the monk fruit. Really, I really like the monk fruit. Um, and maple syrup, I love my maple syrup too. The only struggle with that is, is, is the cost. It's If you're getting the really, whoop, hang on a second. There he comes. Jeez. Okay, I got the door. <laughs> He's an ox got big muscles it's a good thing <laughs> so this is the hind quarter so it's good we've been on here a while so you can kind of show them how you cut this up then too oh. real quick well this goes for a little while yeah it does but at least they'll get the idea well i mean there's i, I gotta take a bunch of stuff off that's this fine we're still rough. chatting so um there's a lot of Fat yeah. on this right here. A lot of real nice fat. Um, I actually might take some of that. Render it down. And render it down and use it to make a coating for uh, mm, our boots. My boots. Nice. To waterproof my boots. Yeah. Good deal. So. Good deal. All right, I'm going to flip this back around while you get things situated there because we were, we were chatting about, let's see here. Um, Toika says, freezing makes sense to me too. Don't make more work. Smart. <laughs> yeah, right now it's just not, we're trying to, we're trying to simplify and slow things down a little bit here. Yesterday was very enjoyable. It's just, we didn't do anything. Um, let me see here. Toika says, on my food allergy test, I am more reactive to sugar than dairy and gluten. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Um... Dairy and gluten, you know, the greatest struggle there is all the additives in our, our dairy. And um, it's the processing of our, our flours. You know, if you're not purchasing the non-GMO um, flours, you're getting a lot of additives and a lot of junk in your flours. Where for a couple dollars more, you can be purchasing non-GMO flours and getting a healthier flour that's not as gluten-ridden. The other thing is when you get wheat berries or whatever grain in the whole form and you mill it yourself um you also most likely if you have a gluten intolerance or struggle with gluten you should you may be able to actually utilize that flour and and be okay with it because when you're getting the berries again it's it's a, how they're it's how things are being processed so we have a lot of the whole grains and we have the flowers we have both and then when we we need more we mill so having the mills on hand is a great thing too we've talked about that having a hand grinder as well as an electric grinder which we do have one of each of those um melissa says wow cool um Carol says, have you a greenhouse and grow your own vegetables? Okay, so at the other homestead, we had a huge garden, a, what was it? Gosh, 40 by 40. Yeah. And we had five raised beds, and we got two years of growth out of that, and then I got sick. And I just, I couldn't keep up with it. Plus, I couldn't be in the soil because of mold spores. Um, I had to be, I had to be really, really careful. Uh, my body was filled with mycotoxins and biotoxins which is mold and it was internal so my body was really really sensitive here we have mapped out a 40 by 60 garden which will include fruit trees and berry bushes and um we had a greenhouse started at the other homestead and we took it down um, we never progressed with that but out here um the mountain man already started the foundational area of the greenhouse did we determine what the size was on that? I forget. It's like 10 by 20. Yeah, I think, yeah. So 10 by 20 greenhouse. It's partially underground. Um, we are hoping to start that in spring. We were hoping to do it, you know, now and be able to get that in so we could be growing things this winter. 
but um, we need to um, replenish our finances to be able to do that because we're not going into debt to do any of this. So um, we need to get the, and basically all we would need right now will be the panels for the roof. We want to get the corrugated um, greenhouse panels just for the roof. We have windows for the, for the whole sides and um, we were discussing the preparation for that actually, I think yesterday or the day before on how we're gonna do things with that. So the greenhouse will go into place for sure in spring and then we will start working the garden um, as we can. Uh, our backhoe is down, so uh, a lot of it's gonna have to be done by hand and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that's gonna need to be removed. We did, we did as much as we could um, even dug holes for the fruit trees a while, but we're going to have to work that land and work the, the area there. But it'll be part of our, our spring journey and our day-to-day -day that we'll be sharing with you guys. Let me see here. Uh, Toika says, I hadn't thought of using wheat berries. Oh, yes. Wheat berries are a really... It's really, it's really nice to be able to mill your own flowers. Um, I really, really enjoy that. And, and yes, they don't have near as much gluten. Einkorn flour or einkorn berries, um, it's an ancient grain, um, a lot more wholesome for you, and that has less gluten than regular wheat berries as well. So that is another option for you, Toika. Um, let's see, how long have you been homesteading now? It will be 11 years in May that we've been officially off grid and homesteading. So um, 11 years. And we, basically along the same lines as the, um, as far as like what we're doing now, um, we grew up doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had several gardens there on the farm. Um, fruit trees we had a root cellar that we put all our the potatoes in the squash the the apples the all that stuff went into the root cellar for through the winter and you had a spring house spring and, house and yep. all that stuff i grew so, up the same way you know it's kind of been something i grew up doing but just not off grid right yeah, for both of us. The off-grid part was the part that we really wanted the most for us because it gave us the complete freedom. And and now um, we got our two new batteries in and I'm like super stoked. I'm going to, I'll wait because I think I'm getting it today. I'll share tomorrow. I've got something exciting to share with you regarding our power also. But now that we've got things in place, the batteries in, we're, we're getting to a place where we can um, keep ourselves better charged. The last couple days, Friday included, we were really struggling trying to keep up with the cloudy days and trying to keep ourselves powered with what we had in our setup. But it's starting to, it's starting to come together and it's, I think it'll be sufficient for us. But um, it's an awesome lifestyle and there's so much great freedom here. And it's funny because we both grew up that way, but we both stepped away from it. We wanted to experience life. We wanted to be see the world in a sense and it's kind of funny because we were both drawn back to our roots so it, it was instilled in us at an early age and we were discussing it the other day because we always say we were born a hundred years too late but looking at things and, and reading back on history and seeing when some of this chaos we're going through right now actually started we decided that we we were born 200 years too late <laughs> but Love this. Love the traditional side of things. That, that part of it's not for everybody, but you don't have to be traditional to live off the grid. I mean, you could be where you are and just start using solar. So, um, and, and homesteading is a choice as to how deep and how, um, how much you want to delve into it. Hey, Miss Tammy. She says, I missed the start sewing for grandsons. That's okay. No worries. We're glad you could join us. And I see everybody saying hello. Carol says, ooh, I can't wait to follow along. I imagine that's the greenhouse and garden. And uh, Aaliyah says, nice. Uh, let's see here. Do you freeze the meat in packets or bags? Okay. We do a little bit of both, but this year, hang on one second, and I'll show you. Okay. Ah. In here 
are the vacuum sealer bags. We do have a really nice vacuum sealer. That is one of our powered appliances. Like I said, we only have very limited. I uh, That I can think of, we have three. We have our meat grinder, our vacuum sealer, and my uh, grain mill that's electric. Um, but the other thing that we use, and this is what we're using this year, instead of digging out the vacuum sealer, is we are using, hang on a second, I'm trying to do one-handed again here. There you go, you can see it is pink butcher paper. Um, it's not bleached, there is bleached on the market. There's also the bleached on the market that has plastic on the inside and we try to avoid plastic as much as possible where we can the vacuum seal paper or the plastic that is the one thing that we do use and it does make a difference in the meat it does preserve it longer it keeps it from getting freezer burned so that is something that we do use but we try to stay away from using plastic just because of the the carcinogens that are seeping out of things and into food since i got sick we just we just went hardcore because i really needed to be careful and it really made me sick so so we do we do the paper and we do the vacuum sealing. Um, good question though, very um, good question. I love the we, questions you guys are asking today. We have uh, do sometimes can. Yeah, we talked. Can, can um, Toika asked what, how we were going to preserve it and if we um, were going to can it earlier when you were getting that slab of meat. And I shared that you had gotten your moose. Did we get an elk that year, or was it just the five deer and the and the moose? I can't remember. I don't yeah, I don't remember either. I kind of just think it was the five deer and the moose. That moose was some good eating. And mule deer is something else that we've really um, enjoyed. There again, I was just going to say that. Yeah, I was just going to say that. He used to do... Hey, Angie. Angie is joining us from Silent Tree Naturals. If you guys remember, I was sharing um, her cayenne and menthol... Uh, salve that she has. That is Angie. So you guys got to go check out silenttreenaturals.com because she has amazing stuff. But um, I'm glad you're joining, Ange. I just had to, I had to give you a shout out there. Um, the reason he says about the sagebrush is because he used to guide hunts in the backcountry in um, Wyoming and uh, they were feasting there on a lot of sagebrush. So you could definitely taste it in the meat. We were really fortunate that um, his mule deer was feasting on corn. And um, mine was just at the top of the mountain feasting on whatever, you know. So um, that's one thing you got to keep in mind. I always say we have the best non-GMO meats. And I was saying that one day and a lady got on and said that she's surrounded by cornfields. And I was like, you know, and I didn't think about that because we're really spoiled out here. We're surrounded by tall timber. We don't have a lot of agriculture. So we don't have a lot of soybean fields and corn fields that are GMO planted. Uh, canola is another one. And um, canola, they do grow uh, further south of us here. But... You know, those are GMO seeds, GMO products. So when an animal's eating that, they are, in essence, a GMO product because they are what they eat. When we had our chickens, we were feeding them organic feed. And um, because of that, because it carries through to their eggs, it carries through to their meat. And um, it's something you got to consider. So... Although I say that, you know, hunting provides some of the best non-GMO organic meats, it does depend where you're located and what they're eating. So that does, that does make a difference. And if you like sage, you'll like it when they're feasting on the sage. Uh, but it is quite better, abundant. <laughs> you better really like it. <laughs> yeah, because it's pretty abundant. So I'm going to switch this around here. Let me see if anybody said anything else. But keep the questions coming. And for those of you watching the replay, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. No question is dumb, ever. If you're willing to ask it and you want to learn something, it's it's the best thing you can do. Ask if you have a question. Um, because that's how you learn. And this is important stuff, truly. Uh, we need to learn how to feed our families. And, and you know, we've grown spoiled. Some of us, you know, have 
have health issues and reasons why we may not be able to do this ourselves. But um, knowing people that do and, and that, you know, we have friends that uh, purchase their deer tag and then have people um, proxy hunt for them so that they can still get the fresh meat and, and the wholesome meat, but that they, because they can't do it, they have someone else do it. So, you know, there's ways around it. Um, will we ever see Mountain Man do some iron work? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, he's probably going to be getting at that before too awful long um, to start things back up again for our products, but also um, hinges and different things. Will you be doing some of that for the um, generator house? No. Okay. Probably not. What about in here? Uh, I don't know yet. Okay. But, yeah. but yes, it's definitely it's definitely coming. And he actually has a blacksmithing class, just like a 101 for people that are wanting to get started that we're getting in place. And he also has a trapping 101 that I'm getting in place as well um, for those of you that are interested in learning trapping. So those classes will be hitting our academy really soon. I'm going to let Copper out. Is there anything uh, out there? Yeah, no, not a good idea. Okay, you need to stay here because you're going to be naughty. Sorry, Mrs. Copperhead. Okay, so can you, are you a, to a point where you can show where you yes. would cut a roast out? Uh, yeah, I guess. No pressure or anything? Um, right now I'm just kind of taking, there's a thin layer of, like, sinew, and it's not all sinew down in here, it's sinew and that, but just the, um, thin layer of, I'm not even sure what you really call it, but I'm just cutting that off just makes your meat taste a little better yep and it's a lot easier to get it off now than when you are trying to um <laughs> carol says she's surprised she's not hanging off the leg no but look how close she is she she's knows, she's she, she knows, knows she'll get paddled but oh hey. you're gonna get in trouble no. go <laughs> But it's easier to take that layer off now than when you have the individual roast and you're trying to cut it off. The way he was cutting that off too, Carol says, lol. If you watch, the way he's cutting that off and, and, and especially the previously, it's the same thing you do with the hide when you're cutting the hide off the animals. You just keep working see. your way down and pooling while you're cutting, yeah. That stuff that. will make your meat taste bad too if it gets left on. There's still... Um, you know, you can still see there's some meat on there. I'll come I'll come back and trim that trim that off. So it's definitely a but, process and it takes time, but it's such good eating. Oh my gosh. Kinda of depends on where what kind of you know, roast or and what kind of size meals you guys eat. It's so funny. If you guys if you guys could see his plate full when when we are eating. It's so funny when people come and they don't eat a lot and they see his plate. Like his plate is like two times the size of the average person's plate, but he's also burning a lot of calories every day. So it's just funny. And my guys, the you know, Mountain Ben and the Mountain Boy, they eat the same way. I mean, I eat like a bird compared to them, but it's just really funny. So it depends what size you're shooting for, but we usually go for something that we can what that's good for the two of us and then we'll get now yeah now usually, before we used to go for like four or six usually i'll make them for the the two of us and then um you know if we have somebody else come we'll just grab another roast we'll down grab another one and yeah you know, throw it in but um you know it kind of depends on what you're also wanting to do with it i mean if you're just Wanting to cut it up into little slices and make fry up little almost steaks like or yeah, because we we used but, to do a lot of roasts and actually cook them as roasts, but now what we seem to do is do the neck roast as a roast and then pull out the regular roast like he's gonna cut here and slice them into steaks. So we enjoy enjoy that a lot more now. And there's there's a gazillion and one ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's general things that make up, you know, different cuts and stuff like that. But um, 
how I do it is I just follow in, like there's this seam here, I follow the seams and then I'll take and come, I'll actually cut this down, this is, uh, you know, here's the hot, and you come up and you got the, the this would be the back, oops, the backbone, the backbone right there, and the, you know, right in there, so, um, what I'll do is I'll come up against like the pelvis here and I'll cut straight in and I'll come into the into the bone and then I'll come up to this like seam here and there's and then I'll come down in here right above this joint right in here and come in and 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 there's um people like i said a lot of people do have their own way of doing stuff you know but and there's the sinew and stuff in here so i just take and sometimes i'll just take and i'll keep on cutting right around and follow the bone off of this piece i'll cut right down in here and then right here and i'll just follow that right around the bone yep. and then i'll clean this sinew stuff off and then i'll take and um then i'll cut up my roast and stuff like that but here you know here's a good piece to make a a nice roast out of or two but I follow, you know, just following the, all your, all your muscle groups have, um, like, ways they fold and stuff. So, you can, if you want, you can cut across those, you can follow those. It's just kind of personal preference, really. Um, and you got to look at it this way, too. If your roasts are too big, you've always got leftovers. I love leftovers. It makes, you know, the next day a lot easier for me. Um, but, yes, uh, the importance of the knife is that it is sharp because it enables you to be able to go around and get all the meat versus just, like, it getting shaggy in places. I mean, he cleans things off the bone, so it's really awesome. And, and that is a knife he made, Angie. I saw her say something about the knife being awesome. Let me see here. Um, Carol says, my son is 28. His name is Drew. He has three Christmas dinners, one with me, one with his friend's mom and dad, which he's done every year since he was 10, and then one with his dad's and, and pudding, lol. And puddings, lol, she says. <laughs> that makes me hurt thinking about it. That's like That's like Thanksgiving stomach all over again. He probably does the same thing at Thanksgiving, doesn't he? <laughs> That's when you go to bed and you're in a, like a complete coma. <laughs> Carol says, wow, this is fascinating to watch. And Angie says, that must be an awesome knife. Yes, it needs to be sharp. Key thing is always having sharp knives. And I don't know if you heard him, but he was sharpening while we were talking. Um, and Elias says, oh, I bet that makes a great roast. Yeah, look at that yeah, meat. I mean, it's just, you can just, just tell the cut of it and... Mm. Why don't we save that one for supper tonight? Okay. <laughs> I had to twist his arm. Did you um, hear that? <laughs> so what are you wanting to do like we normally do? Yeah. Okay, so what what we'll do is we'll take and um take a roast like this and then come in and we'll just cut thin slices. Mm, mm, mm. in butter yeah. with seasoned salt and onion powder and basically and make a a little almost steak yep like that thickness is about you know my thumb's a little thicker but it's his big mitts finger <laughs> half inch or so wide um so but I, you just take them and slice them then <laughs> Kara says will you stop I'm starving I know I'm getting hungry too actually <laughs> and uh just keep on rolling 
<laughs> Carol says, I've always make sure there's enough leftovers for dinner the next day so I can make bubble and, and squeak with the leftover meats and vegetables. <laughs> Funny story, Carol. Before he came into our lives, Austin and I would make this a, a chuck roast, for example. And we would have, we'd make that on a Sunday and we'd have leftovers for a good bit of the rest of the week. He comes into our lives and I make the same amount of meat and it's gone. I mean, gone. There aren't leftovers. There aren't nothing. He ate it all. <laughs> That's when I learned I was in trouble. In order to get leftovers, I need to make like three meals at one time for there to be leftovers. And like even Oop. something, you know, I'm, I'm kind of squaring this up a little bit now, but something like that, you take that and fry that. Oh man, that's good. Good, that's just good. a good cut of meat and it's all i mean look at this it's just mm. and see we hang it for we we've left it hanging for what two oh whenever muzzleloader season was yeah so i don't know two it's a blur anymore but it's been hanging for at least two weeks if not longer if if nah, not two. longer but if it's <laughs> if it's um cold enough out i like to let it hang um the, the longer you can let it hang, the, the better the better it's going to be for you. It tenderizes it. It gets rid of the gaminess, and it just it, oh, it just tastes so amazing. I mean, that's, I'll get that's a skillet out. kind of hard to, to beat something like that. I mean, that's... I know. That's yeah. nice. Look at that. That's a, yeah. that's a good cut of meat right there. That's so beautiful. everybody wants to know when dinner is. So let's say 4.30 Pacific Standard. <laughs> What time is it? Uh, oh, it's only three. It's only three. <laughs> um, sure, uh, I don't know. When, when's everybody want to come? Right. <laughs> I Can think this might might last us. Right. If everybody shows up. <laughs> that would be so awesome to have everybody. That would be so cool. We've actually right. talked. We have a huge cast iron pot. Kettle. Oh, well, yeah. It's a huge kettle. It's I don't even know how many quarts. I don't remember if we figured that out. I think it's like 15... Oh, I think it's more than that. No, it's like 15 gallons. Oh, okay, gallons. I was going to say. Yeah, it's not like quarts. 15 gallons. It's massive. It's big I found it for him. I was looking. This was so fun. I was I was looking for one, and every time I kept finding one, they would sell instantly, and they were going for like 100 bucks. And I was on my motorcycle. This was back in Pennsylvania, and I passed this yard sale, and I saw one sitting there. So I spun around really quick, and I went back, and these two guys are standing there, and there's the kettle. I'm like, how much are you asking for the kettle? He's like, 45. I'm like, sold. The guy standing, one guy standing there goes, well, gosh, if she wants it that bad, she can have it. Here, he was going to buy it, and I bought it right out from underneath him. But I had like 20 minutes. I had to run home on the bike quick to get the truck because I there's no way I could have put that on my motorcycle. So it was really funny. So that was his Christmas present the one year. But we've been talking about doing chicken, like a big pot of chicken vegetable soup or chicken noodle soup or something and having a huge party. So we'll have to figure it out. But, Carol, you got to come. <laughs> um, this here... Uh, you can kind of see how this laid here. So this will roll, cut this, and then this rolls back, and I cut down in here. And then you can actually take this completely off of here, following the the Grain the, of the, meat the that. muscle group like that. And then I'll clean, you know, I'll clean running out of room here yeah we are um, i'm sorry i'll get a pot then but but i'll clean all this gristle and and sinew and and stuff off um because again it's so this. much easier when you have the big piece of meat and you've got the super sharp knife and you can just cut it out now plus he can then utilize it and and turn it into his lures and whatever else he's gonna yeah. mush it up into well, what what I'll what I'll do is I'll take you can see there's meat on here yet. Right. Um what I'll do is I'll clean that meat off of this other stuff and clean it up and um put it in the burger pot. And then I'll put that meat that I have left over there that's on that stuff. I'll put that 
in the burger for the burger, and I'll this throw this the... other slimy, Oops. nasty stuff. I'll throw that in the scrap bucket. All right. We have a couple other comments here, so let me see what we got going on here. Okay, so... Uh, let me see here. I just can't. Angie said, what time are we eating? Carol says, lol. Uh, Tammy says, leftovers here are extremely rare. I'm sure, girl, you got, you've got a big family. So uh, Tammy's feeding lots of mouths. Um, Toika says, perfect size for a steak and then wrapped in bacon. Oh, I like her. Yes, yep, ma'am. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and I like what Carol has to say. She says, I love to make cauliflower and broccoli cheese. I cook mm. it. The night before a big dinner, my son and his mate used to come down on the night and eat the whole thing and leave the forks in the dish. <laughs> but I love that too. I actually make cauliflower and broccoli. Well, I make like cauliflower mashed potatoes, if you will. Like a if you're substituting mashed potatoes, I would mash cauliflower and put lots of butter on it. She said, I'd love to... It could take a while as UK not flying out. Oh, wow, that's right. You guys are totally closed down right now. I think... Um, get her, get Germ a boat. Yeah. Get a boat. <laughs> oh, she says, I love that. Yes. Wow. Oh, yum. Yeah, I'm really getting hungry now. So this is that piece I just cut out. Okay. There, kind of cut that other stuff off and, and there. Um, what, what we'll do is probably... Just make this into two rows. Yep. I'll just cut it right down the center. And look at that meat. That's oh some good goodness. stuff right yeah. there. That's just so nice. Awesome. So awesome. Nice. And then we'll, you know, if if we want to make it like a roast, you can make it like a roast. Or if you want to do like what we are going to do tonight and fry it, you know, slice, slice it. it. And then... I, I honestly can't remember the last time we had a roast as a roast because we've gotten we started cutting it into steaks and just started loving it so much that we've been doing that with all of them. What um what I do is I'll take and I'll cut all my roasts out that I can get. Excuse me, and then um, what's all left over goes to burger. So I'll get as many roasts like I said as I can, and then trim everything else off and, and run it back in the burger in the burger so like it's oops, sorry old dog um <laughs> a lot of people and it's not something you want to use for um in a roast or anything like that but a lot of people will actually take some of this stuff back here and they'll pitch it mm. it has a lot of sinew in it Quite a bit of sinew in it but i'll take it and i'll cut it up in the thin strips, strips kind of like uh yeah like you were off the ribs sort yeah, of kind of thin, thin strips and then i just grind it grind it right up in the hamburger and and you don't you don't know it it's really it's, yeah our and our burger yeah. is not real gristly or anything mm -hmm. i mean you can see some in there but i mean it's very very little so it's Really, really good meats. I'm going to spin this back around and answer some questions here. Okay, let me see here. Um, <laughs> Carol says it's 11.05 p.m. here. If I eat now, I won't sleep, lol. <laughs> yeah. I hear that. Um, Carol also said, what herbs and spices do you use on your meat dishes? It's And, and Toika says, such gorgeous meat. It is, and it's really tender. It's just amazing, and it's amazing to eat. Um it's kind of funny, Carol. We have tons of spices, and we do use a lot of different spices. It depends what kind of spicy mood we're in when we're making our meats. Normally, she's pretty spicy. So. I am. So it, and it's really funny because he's always like, "Well, whatever she was hungry for is what we're getting." However, I do say, "What would you like to eat?" And he's like, "I don't care." So you know, yeah. So then you get what my spicy side is craving. So um, anyway, back to that. Uh, Typically, what we use is seasoned salt, um, whether it's Lari's or whether it's a homemade seasoned salt, or I will use Himalayan or Celtic salt. We do not use Morton salt at all in our home because that's like eating petroleum. It's not good for you. So um, one of those forms of salt we use, I like to grind my pepper because it's more flavorful. Um, I also have a Himalayan salt grinder, which we will use. 
and then I have either garlic powder or, well, we use garlic powder and onion powder. They are not salts because we put enough salt in otherwise. So those are just the powdered granules or the granules of garlic and onion. And um, sometimes I'll use lemon pepper. Sometimes I will use curry. Sometimes I will use chili powder. But the initial ones that I mentioned, the garlic and the onion, the pepper and the salt of a sort, um, is typically all we use. But um, we do, uh, what's the other one? Um, cumin is something else I use occasionally um, but we'll add oregano we'll add it just depends on what we're making um, you know if I'm making some kind of an Italian dish like lasagna or even just spaghetti and meatballs I will add um, you know oregano or uh, cilantro uh, and I, I'll actually use fennel on occasion so I have a lot of seasonings and as I get my kitchen in here you'll see me using more of them I've got I had a beautiful drawer it was in the cupboard but it was a it was a cupboard that the, the shelf pulled out and it was all of my spices so I love using different spices and and different seasonings when I make a roast or when I make a neck roast we'll add some celery seeds or um, you know cilantro different things like that basil um, is another one that I use but when I'm frying up the meats it's just really basic because it's just really good that way <laughs> and um, he uses his hot sauce on everything yeah I love hot sauce. We call it gizzard twitch. Our friend named it for us. John named it gizzard twitch. Our, our hot sauce is very, very hot. It's 40 habaneros per batch. <laughs> um, I'm hoping here before too long, probably won't be this year, but I want to get, uh, get to making some sausage. Oh, yeah. And, uh, sausage. My, once I get my smokehouse up and running make some sausage and some um jerky and all kinds all of stuff. smoke smoke some roasts roast and, and stuff That's... we'll have an elk ham mm -hmm. yum and bacon yummy yum. chewy bacon, bacon. <laughs> that's something different <laughs> oh now there was more things said here uh you all eat good yes we do that is one thing and i cannot make a meal without meat gotta have meat if i make a meal see i don't need meat every meal i'm like a vegetable girl too but i do like i do like my my meats but i cannot i get i get very ugly looks if the, i present a meal without meat and this is funny deb this is for you i said i was gonna make squash soup the other day and he goes are you putting meat in it I'm like no i'm not ruining my squash soup with meat i'll make you steaks to go with the soup <laughs> It's just gotta, funny. Gotta have the meat. <laughs> gotta have the meat. Oh. Carol says, do you make sauces? Oh, and she also says, hence why we need shelves with fantastic metal brackets, of course, lol. <laughs> well, the, the brackets <clears throat> the, the brackets that I'm making right now for the shelves um, aren't real going to be real fancy uh, just because I don't have time to make fancy ones maybe eventually I'll make some normally what I do is I'll take them and uh, make up the angle part the 90 degree and then I'll take and uh, make a put a twist in them and sometimes I'll curl the ends make some real bit like like the hook over there behind him sort of uh, something like that Whoop. and maybe what you could do because I'd be okay with that too is just do the ends in the decorative ones because you won't really see the other ones anyway with the jars in the way. Because yeah. the ends will be what's going to be showing here. But they're also heavy duty because these shelves... <laughs> oh, these, these shelves are um, going to be loaded with some heavy stuff. <laughs> Toika says... Toika says gizzard twitch with the big eyes, and she says 40. <laughs> yes, 40 yeah, hobs. Yeah. It, is, it is some hot stuff. And Carol, thank you for cheering on my shelving. <laughs> um, I will get back to the sauces. Uh, there's the hot sauce. And you just dip a knife in it and gingerly. No, you need more than that. No, well, for you, for the rest of us, it would kill us. You just dip the knife in it. George will attest to it. 
You just dip it in with the tip of the knife and you just gingerly put it on your food. Right. It's not something that you spoon it on or you will like probably lay on the floor and die. Yeah, there <laughs> people already have said, oh yeah, I like hot stuff, I love hot stuff, da 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 <laughs> And uh, they, uh, they warned them. <laughs> they didn't listen. They end up guzzling a lot of water. Yeah. Um, Carol says a bracket's better than no bracket. Absolutely. And she says she's trying here. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, yes, on the sauces. We make our own tomato sauce. Um, we haven't done it in a little bit of time here, a couple years, because of me being sick. But, yes, we do make sauces. I do like making white sauces also. And I used to do a lot, like... I used to love buying like um, celery, cream of celery soup and um, what was the other, cream of mushroom soup, but I can't now, or at least I, I haven't looked recently to see if there's non-GMO versions, but I like making my own of those anyway. So to make a nice milky sauce and add some of my freeze-dried um, onions or celery or um, mushrooms uh, is what I would do to make a creamy sauce. I also make a lot of soups. I love, that was one thing we ate a lot of when we first got to Idaho 10, 11 years ago was made soups because we were working on a grill again and I needed something that I could do that would cook while we were working so that we could just eat when we were done. And I didn't have the sun ovens then. So um, I did a lot of soups and stews and we still do that. Um, my, my stews consist of really big chunks of potato and carrot and meat celery. And yep, meat and taters. I mean, we're pretty simple. And as far as our seasonings and our sauces, we're pretty simple there too, but they're real flavorful. You know, we do add a lot of seasonings and, and salt is one of those things. My mother-in-law makes fun of me. She tells me that I'm going to get salt diabetes because I have a really huge salt addiction. Um, but what's really funny is, and I get that honestly, my grandfather was like a major salt addict. But again, Morton salt is toxic. Himalayan salt, Celtic salt, those salts are much healthier for you. They actually replenish things in your system. So she's always told me I'm going to have salt diabetes and I had a blood work done and drawn and my sodium was actually low so I thought that was really funny and of course I shared that with her but it's just something that we laugh about you know I told you before I love the woman she's a she's a dear friend of mine not just my mother-in-law so but that was just one of our funnies I do eat a lot of salt and I salt everything so um but it's typically Himalayan salt I save my Celtic salt a lot for um different uh natural health needs so but um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, yummy, I'm drooling like copper now. I'm going to have to have a cuppa and, and sneak a, a bicycle or two in, lol. <laughs> a, a big, a bicy, not a bicycle. Okay, so what is that? It's B-I-C-C-Y. Share with me because I don't know what that is. And yes, copper's drooling. Copper, oh, copper is our drooler. Good grief. When she, she's, she's needing something she's a big dog so just imagine that's all the more i'll say <laughs> but share what that is and then i'll probably oh a biscuit okay so i'm learning and am i saying it right a, a bicy or is it a bissy i'm gonna have to get the lingo here and t say it right and i'm gonna have to get my yorkshire pudding ready for christmas i'm gonna try it the second one so no. bissy <laughs> is that what I said second? <laughs> I think that's what I said second. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's a bissy. We're going to have a bissy. And I was actually, this is really funny. He woke me up this morning. I'm like, you woke, you, you disturbed my dream. I was making buttermilk biscuits. <laughs> so of course we're going to have burger, uh, white creamy, um, sauce with our burger one of these mornings and bis over biscuits bissies all right i got it so i'm getting the lingo carol i'm trying you're gonna have to culture me <laughs> yes she always said i was gonna end up with salt diabetes toika so you have tea and bissies to dip in lol i'm gonna make i have lavender scones i was going to make today to go with my tea 
I actually have the recipe out, so he doesn't quite like those so much. Lavender is not one of his favorites, unless he has a burn. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm not a big lavender person. I don't <laughs> mind it, but... She says, ah, oh, now you're talking. Yes. Yes, and I have a really good chocolate, an almond chocolate biscotti recipe. Spaghetti? Nope, biscotti. Spaghetti? No. Anyway, I don't bake it the second time around to make the biscotti. I eat it as a brownie, and that's really good, too. That's a finger food I could make for us. Dang, Carol. <laughs> Now I'm really hungry. That was the thing yesterday. It was dumping buckets and my um, <laughs> um, all of my raw ingredients are out in the container. And I'm like, you know, as much as I'd like something chocolatey, I'm not feeling like going out in the rain. So I didn't go get anything. But that's why I'm going to make him, I was going to make him no-bake cookies, but I might make biscotti instead, brownies, whatever. So Carol says, oh, wow, I will take 10 of those. Yes, I might have to send you some. We're going to have to exchange addresses. I'm a dark chocolate addict. Yes, I'm a chocolate addict. It doesn't matter what kind. Although one of the things that has happened in, as I've aged is I used to hate white chocolate, but there are certain types of white chocolate I have grown to really enjoy. It's like non-GMO organic white chocolate. It doesn't taste like plastic. It actually tastes like vanilla. It's really good. That's become one of my favorites. Friend of ours from oh, uh, yes. Germany. Germany, yes, from Deutschland. Yes, we'll send over, we'll send over chocolate, so real we, chocolate. And we have a good friend of ours, um, Jordan Gudrun, will bring some sometimes for us. And oh, it's, that's good, that's no, that's good chocolate. Well, but, Carol's probably got some really good chocolate there in the UK, too, I am yeah. sure. Overseas chocolate is nothing compared to the United States chocolate. Nothing. It has nothing on it. It's so, oh my gosh. Stick it in your mouth and it just melts. It has just such an incredible flavor. Um, Carol says, is the address you have on your page where we can send stuff? Yes. And also, I believe it's at the bottom in the description of all of our videos as well. So, um, yes. So you'll have to message me yours but I love I love you guys chatting and all the questions today this was awesome and um, you know the more we learn to take over our food and being able to make our favorite foods you know like say you buy stuff in a can now learn how to make it so that you can make your own from scratch I know it takes more time but when you learn to do that you're equipped for a what's ahead and to have all the ingredients on hand for the things you like that's how we roll we have everything we need here to be able to make whatever it is we need salad dressings candies chocolates brownies whatever and our sauces all that stuff she says brilliant okay i get on the chocolate for you oh <laughs> ooh, <laughs> his eyes just lit up you look at you actually got a smile look here don't hide it <laughs> oh yes i can make fudge that was on my list too um i'm working on fudge and caramel she says yes <laughs> <laughs> too funny um yes uh fudge caramel um and hard candy i used to make us hard candy all the time way before um we were eating healthy i used to use corn syrup and i know you can get brown rice syrup and my girlfriend said you can actually get non-gmo corn syrup but i have to see if i can find the candy flavorings that are organic or aren't toxic i don't know if i can do it but i love we used to love making hard candy so we'll have to see about that. I would love to be able to try making it with the uh, coconut palm sugar, but I'd have to thicken it. So we'll have to play around. I'm always playing and making new recipes. Oh, that's good to know. Her favorite fudge is coffee. I believe that. I, Coffee and chocolate. Yes, you can't go wrong, right? <laughs> Well, I don't want to keep you guys on. We've been on a long time, but this has been really good, really educational, and we talked about a lot of different things. So, you know, it's time where we've got to really consider taking our food into our own hands and not buying processed, 
but buying the raw ingredients and being able to make things ourselves. It's so important because moving ahead, that may be all we have. And I just, I want to plant that seed for you guys to think about it. I am still working on my food sheets, but those are coming out soon and will be a freebie for everybody um, on, on how to figure out what raw ingredients you need. And of course, that's going to be dependent on what foods you enjoy eating and what your family likes, but I can give you a starting point anyway. Carol says, but I don't, I don't drink it, lol. Oh no, don't. She says, oh no, don't leave. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. I know, this is fun. I know, it goes on for a long time. It doesn't seem like we've been on that long. And I do enjoy it. It's very much, it's just as fun for us. And you always make us laugh, so. <laughs> but if you guys have other questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below for those of you watching um, the replay. And if you have praises or prayers, please don't hesitate to leave those either. Um, uh, one of our followers connie joe ask if we would please pray for her so if you can lift her in prayer and uh please keep mona and ken in your prayers and austin had an interview today i'm praising that was good he will find out tomorrow if he gets the job so keep him in your prayers that would be a huge thing for him right now to uh step into that work and and be able to move forward there um carol says i'm always waiting for the bell to go off and i'm up get my my cuppa and i'm in a, in a sit-in. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad you enjoy watching this with us and we enjoy having you. It's been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of new people joining us this year and it's been so much fun. Okay. Uh, Angie says she needs prayers, please. You got it, sister. We will be praying for you as well and pray for Toika. Um, Toika, when do you go back to your doctor and when do you find more out? Um, Carol says prayers and love and hugs for everyone that needs it. Love you, girl. Thank you. Um, Toika needs prayers for her back and, uh, sh she and Dan need prayers. And if you could please keep Diana and Craig in your prayers and Tammy and her family, I would appreciate it. Um, also Kelly and her family for continued healing for Mike and Courtney and, um, also for Jane. Uh, Jane, I'm sorry that you are still feeling lousy. I actually have that praise. I am starting to feel much better. My body is releasing the toxins and I am I'm feeling a lot healthier. Getting out into the fresh air um, is so important. Oh, girl. Angie just says she just got out of the hospital. I hope everything's okay. I'm sorry to hear that. You'll have to email me later. Um... Oh, thank you, Carol. Yes, Angie's a sweetheart. All you guys, you guys are just so awesome, and I'm so thankful for all the connections amongst you guys, too. So, um, and and uh, Jane, if you want to email me, if you watch the replay, um, email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. I have some supplements that uh, I can recommend for you that'll help you to feel better. And awesome, yes, Angie, would love to hear from you, and we'll be praying for you. And we'll continue to go live this week. Tomorrow is my my regular, no, tomorrow's not my regular live. That's Wednesday. It's only Monday. I'm a day, I'm confused. <laughs> um, but we'll go live every day as we start progressing in here as well. And um, I will do my Wednesday. And also our Bible study is started. We are on um, like the third, this is a third one, I believe, uh, for our Bible study. So if you guys are interested, we would love to have you join us. You can do that uh, by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Bible study book club. And um, that is not held on YouTube. That is held in a private setting. We do a Zoom class every week and do the Bible study in that setting. It's awesome. And we would love to have more people joining us. We've had quite a few new people. So the more the merrier. Keep joining in and we will continue going from one book to the other and just uh, being a loving and supporting place for one another. So let me see here. Um, you're more than welcome, honey. Hope you feel better soon. Oh, that's awesome. Um, she did today, okay? And I'm hoping things, you'll have to update us on things and what you're, what you're gonna do so we can keep you in prayers and every day is good. <laughs> okay, awesome. And uh, 
Thank you and blessings. Blessings to you too, Angie, and Merry Christmas. And I hope to be seeing you guys before Christmas. We may do something special on Thursday evening. I haven't decided yet. It depends on our power. So I don't want to announce that yet. Ooh, I just got a funny look. <laughs> I might, I might. I was just going to say, just give somebody an idea of oh. how many roasts. These aren't huge roasts, but um, how many we get out of just a section on an elk. There's the one we cut up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. So get ten just from that small section right here. From one small section. And they're big. They're big roasts. I mean, you can see they're not, they're not tiny. Look at his, well, his mitts. I mean, his mitts swallow mine. I love it. <laughs> Not in front of the children. <laughs> oh, we're crazy. Can you tell? But that's what makes it fun. Tammy says the Bible study is incredible. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. And I hope everybody's getting so much out of it. This week's going to be an amazing topic. Amazing topic. So um, I'm, I'm sure that we will all gain from this week. Carol says every day, come on, it's Christmas, lol. All right, all right, we can do that. <laughs> um, Toika says, looking into spinal stimulator to help block pain before I have surgery, last resort. So do they still think it's a screw that's loose in there that's causing your pains? We will definitely be praying for you. I can't imagine. Um, that's just a scary place to you know, be dealing with pain. And I, I, I know what that's like in some ways, just from me having to lay for a year. So we will definitely be praying for you and keep us posted. Keep, keep me informed when you're doing things so we can be lifting you while you're going through the process. But all right, guys, well, we are going to jump off of here and let you guys get back to your day and get to our butchering and eating. Uh, thanks, Carol, for loving up on her. Uh, we will, you guys are awesome. We have such an amazing community. Man, I am praising God for our community. I watch other people's channels and see how there's trolls and haters and evil people. And man, are we blessed. I love it. I love it. You guys are awesome. And we love you all dearly. You guys are friends and family. And really, I really truly mean that. It's like you guys are extended family. So um, praying for you all. Love you all. We will see you tomorrow at some point and wishing you a wonderful rest of your day. And you guys take care. God bless.